Hello, this is Bini here. Today we are diving into the rise of Nikkei 225. I'm breaking down the reasons why Japan is rising in 2024 compared to other Asian markets, the key reason contributing to the rise and how it can tap into this rally. Let's start with some numbers. The Nikkei 225 which tracks the performance of 225 major Japanese companies. Some names include Toyota Motor, Sony Group, Mitsubishi, Fast Retailing, the parent company of Uniqlo, went up more than 25% since the start of 2024. I made two YouTube videos, one on October 2023 and the other one on Jan 2024, highlighting why investors should be monitoring this index. The first one talked about Nikkei 225 breaking out of an extended consolidation pattern and some fundamental reasons such as the Tokyo Stock Exchange promoting corporate governance. This means that companies are being more transparent and shareholder friendly, which can attract investors and potentially boost stock price. And of course, Warren Buffett increasing his holding in many Japanese these companies that also contributed to why investors starts to take notice about Nikkei 225. The second video talk about how to trade the Nikkei 225 after breaking out uh, of a new high. Now with the Nikkei 225 floating near to 40,000, do you also know that Nikkei has broken above its own historical high price made on Jan 1990? Yes, 1990, that means the highest price that was made 34 years ago. So let's take a look at the chart of what do I mean and, and I think that this is one very good reason why investors should be looking at Nikkei 225. This is the stock chart of Nikkei 225 from 1983 until now. Take a look at this high here. Let me just draw a horizontal line and that's the highest price. And guess what? If you have a look at the recent price data, then the current price of Nikkei 225 has already broken its historic high. So that was the historic high that was made on 1990 and then right now it has already broken above it and right now it's testing this historic high. Then what are the reasons for Nikkei 225 to hang higher? There are many reasons listed but in my opinion it will be a weak yen and a loose monetary policy from the Bank of Japan. Now why is it that weak yen is beneficial for exporters especially for companies which manufacture in Japan and then sell their products overseas? For example, a weak yen would mean that it's cheaper for Japanese to manufacture in Japan but when they sell their products in overseas, they are able to earn foreign currencies. And when they bring back the foreign currency, they will be able to convert to more Japanese yen and this would lead to a higher valuation in terms of their stocks valuation and it's being reflected in Nikkei 225. And of course, a loose monetary policy plays a part too. Back in 2020, it took an average of 105 yen for 1 USD. Now, it takes 153 yen for 1 USD. That means that a Japanese Japanese investors will need to take 153 yen to get 1 USD. So if Japanese investors want to buy into foreign bonds or foreign stocks, it would be so much more expensive now with a weak yen. Purchasing power with yen is now much lower and hence the logical way for Japanese investors would be to buy into local stock market, isn't it? Also, with BOJ loose monetary policy with a lower interest rate, the stocks with an average dividend yield of more than 3% will be a lot more attractive to investment compared to low yielding JGB bonds. Have you clicked the subscribe button? And how about a like? Back to the charts, perhaps you ask me now with Nikkei 225 at the all time high. How high or how far can it go or is it becoming very expensive? Now from the technical point of view, I could only say that it takes a lot of effort for all-time historical high to be broken. It means that investors must be really very bullish about the stock market. It means that investors must be really very enthusiastic and positive about the stock market, about the underlying stocks listed in Nikkei 225. Right, so we saw that right now price had already beaten that historical high and the question will be how far it can go. Now it's very difficult to predict but I'm just going to try my best to talk about it from the technical point of view. So one way is you can see that this is like a rounding bottom. Uh, the way to predict a possible profit target from a rounding bottom is to measure from the low to the breakout point and then to take this distance, let's say for example this is the distance x right and to take this distance to 
project that x distance from that breakout point that means that we're assuming that it's going to move up in the x distance as that uh, rounding bottom distance okay so then exactly uh, how how high or how much right we are talking about so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to measure from the bottom here to that breakout point and that's about thirty one thousand six hundred points right and to take this and to put it that to the breakout level here and that would means we are talking about 70,000 yes 70,000 for the Nikkei 225 based on this technical measurement here okay of course then this is just my assumption it doesn't mean that you will really go to 70,000 but from the technical point of measurement then the Nikkei 225 has a potential target of 70,000 and as usual disclaimer uh, applies here Let's take a look at a few ways Singaporean investors can be involved in the Japanese stock market. I'm listing three ways that one can actively manage on their own and this method will be much cheaper than investing in two unit trusts. Again, please evaluate the risk involved and whether it fits your financial plans. First is via an exchange traded funds ETF that was recently listed in the Singapore Stock Exchange on Jan 2024. And yes, you're right, this will be Nomura Lion, Japan Active ETF powered by AI. The key features of this ETF is that it is an actively managed ETF that invests in a portfolio of Japanese equities. The management style is a blend of human expertise and artificial intelligence AI for stock selection. The specific details of the AI and human selection process are not publicly disclosed. However, it is likely the AI analyzes huge amount of data to identify promising Japanese companies and human fund managers make final investment decision. The investment objective aims to achieve long-term capital growth through active management of the portfolio. The index doesn't track any specific index, unlike passively managed ETF. And the nice news would be it is currently trading in two counters. Uh, if you don't want to change to US dollar, then the stock code would be JJJ for Singapore dollar ETF, and the stock code would be JUS for US dollar traded uh, ETF. Recently, Mira Asset also launched MSCI Japan DLC. DLC would mean Daily Leverage Certificate, which is meant for short-term trading. The DLC here tracks MSCI Japan Index. The MSCI Japan Index is a benchmark stock index designed to measure the performance of large and mid-sized capitalization companies in Japan. The focus would be to look at 85% of the free float adjusted market capitalization of the Japanese equity market and it includes approximately 225 companies. This index was launched in 1986, making it a well-established and widely used benchmark. Head to my query, warrens.com.sg page, and then under the Warren tools, you are able to go to the Warren selector to find the Nikkei 225 underlying, which allows you to use the warrants to trade into the Nikkei 225. If you are bullish, then you can select a call warrants. If you are bearish, then you can select a put warren. Alright, come to the end of today's video. Hope you like it. This is the third video that I've done on Nikkei 225. And uh, please watch the other two videos, even though that the trade had passed. But I think that the other two videos, they do provide a lot of information on why I was uh, very enthusiastic about looking at Nikkei 225. And that's all for today. I will see you in my next video. Remember, if you do like this video, give me a thumbs up and as well as do subscribe to the channel. See you in my next video.